A runner asked me if he had done his zone two run correctly. He was measuring heart rate, his heart rate warmed up, got into zone two, and then it just sat there. Looked absolutely perfect, right in the middle of zone two. Nothing to see here. But he was also measuring power and pace. So his power started to drift up, he felt pretty good, and he sat just above zone two. He had some hills, and he had some downhills, he had some uphills, he had some false flat, he had some downhills, and then he finished off. So that's what his power looked like. Thing is, he spent a lot of time in zone three and zone four and even a little bit in zone five. So is this aerobic zone two run by heart rate actually a zone two run? No, it's not. When you enter into these high zones, you are adjusting the stimulus that you are putting on your system. It's no longer an aerobic stimulus. It's like throwing a few 20 kg dumbbell curls into a set of 10 kg dumbbell curls. You won't really notice it, and if you're super aerobically fit, your heart rate will barely flinch. You'll just be able to buffer the increased demand for ATP, O2, and offload the excess CO2 from the anaerobic metabolism, especially if these efforts aren't really long. And then what adds to the confusion is that when we have pace, we might set our pace mostly along the same line, but when we go up a hill, our pace goes down, our power goes up. When we go down a hill, our pace goes up, and it otherwise is kind of inverse of power. So our average pace may look like it average in zone two, our heart rate definitely stayed in zone two, but power gives us another layer of understanding of whether we are gray zone training or adding unnecessary stress to our training plan that then subsequently adds fatigue and can cause burnout or injuries. So what I want you to do is check your data, see if your heart rate, pace, and power all align for the zones that are the target of the session.